Okay, good morning everybody and uh, welcome to our webinar on how to sell remotely. I am Emmanuel Clement, Partnership Manager for SEMLEP. SEMLEP is a public-private body and uh, one of its roles is to help businesses with information and support on COVID-19 via our team of business advisors and webinars. During this uh, webinar, we welcome your questions. So if you could please type them in the chat section, that would be great. With a, change, with a change in business landscape, it can be uncomfortable to sell during a crisis. But with the world adapting to the coronavirus pandemic, it's about adapting your selling techniques. To tell us how best to do this is our guest speaker, Chris Sandler, Managing Director of Sandler Training, the sales and leadership training organization who's uh, delivered some previous events for us. So welcome again, Chris, and uh, great to have you uh, with us today again. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Would you like me to uh, kick off? Yes, please. Lovely. Well, uh, let me have a little look. So morning, everybody. And um, I'll try and uh, just share the screen now. And with a little bit of luck, you should see a title. Have you have you got something about selling in front of you? Yeah. Okay, mom. Uh, morning, everybody. And uh, it's quite a tricky world, isn't it, um, that we find ourselves in. And today's session, uh, it's quite important that we we really recognise that for for us to be able to get out of this situation that we're in and to be successful in the recovery, we have to be selling in some way, shape or form. Added to the fact that we, we're all, the conventional norm seems to have evaporated, we're sort of like rocking now between uh, um, what do I do next, how do I go about it, shall I try some of the old stuff, maybe if I keep going with what I've done before it will eventually become good. All of these sort of questions hit everybody in business now. So for those of us on the call who think that it's a struggle uh, in their situation, please take comfort that you're probably not on your own. A few people are enjoying wonderful times uh, at this particular moment, but it's the rarer, uh, if we did a straw poll, that's rarer than um, uh, uh, the majority. So okay, uh, for the next 50 minutes that you've got me, 55 minutes, I'm gonna be, uh, going through quite a few bits of material that hopefully at least one thing you can take away and implement back at base that you would like to try that maybe uh, could make a difference for you. So that's, that's my objective. Um, any real questions, any indeed questions, you can capture me uh, afterwards, either with Sam, Emmanuel, or myself. Uh, you can get me on LinkedIn, I'm pretty easy to find. Uh, arm yourselves now with a pen and paper because I'm throwing out ideas and so the, the, the pace is going to be quite quite lively. Some of you, if you've seen my series before, I always like to start with a reminder of what it is we can and cannot do. Learning is all about four steps in the process. Uh, we're at step one in today's session. So as I say, for three quarters an hour, 50 minutes, we're looking at an awareness of the situation we've got around us. Then afterwards, we can look at deep dive into the knowledge, maybe change some skills, but then don't let it rot. Uh, keep keep revisiting and revisiting and revisiting and using um, uh, the learning as a as a profession. To get the best out of this is please participate in the chat window. If you've not done Zoom before or you've not participated in a webinar before, I think we're on mute for the microphone because that that can get a little bit crazy with the uh, comments. So we rely on the chat platform, and I'll be asking for you for uh, you for some feedback, which is really useful for me um, and uh, for you it allows you to sort of like maybe get a bit more clarity if I've gone too quickly or there's something related to your case uh, specifically so a great place to start with a chat is can I throw out a question to everybody in, uh, uh, online today can you share with me some ideas in the chat menu about things that you're finding a struggle with most uh, selling remotely and selling in today's crisis. What sort of things are, are really coming across uh, in your world? And I'll capture it on the chat as it, as it comes through. Well, I've just caught up. Hello, Emmy. 
you mind me drinking my tea? Oh, the physicality, lovely, who said that? We've got, oh, sorry, it's gone up the screen. Yes, the physicality is what we're traditionally used to, isn't it? And now we've got this disconnect between ourselves and the, uh, and the camera and the, the, what we say. Um, okay, selling events at um, venues. Well, that's going to be that's going to be sort of taking a little while for the dust to settle down as to what is or isn't allowed um, uh, for that type of thing. So, of course, projecting something with a future when you're not sure what's happening today is is always very very tricky. We've got the the lockdown, and in fact, um, Melissa, hey, I, you've got my every sympathy because I'm not sure it's clear when that can when that can pick up. Yeah, segmentation with the customers. Um, we'll pick on that a little bit towards the end in terms of ideas that I'll throw out there and maybe you can pick up on and see what we can do. Yeah, there's a bit of an economy collapse. Uh, we'll cover that. One thing we're not really covering, but one thing I'll throw out there for anybody who's absolutely limited in what it is that they do, Prior to starting the call, I shared with Emmanuel and, uh, and Sam, uh, there are some things that we're going to have to revisit and think again. Um, uh, I'm a classroom-based trainer. So as with hairstylists, people who are in physiotherapy and other such fields, uh, this is a bit of a blow when <laughs> you've got the social distancing. It doesn't work. So we can either accept it and sink further back or we may have to start thinking about alternatives. So for me, you're witnessing some of my alternatives. We have to think outside the box a little bit over there. Digital prospecting, who's got it, Fandy? Digital prospecting uh, is something we're covering today. Uh, not in a great depth, but we'll talk about things. And as I say, I'll be throwing out some ideas and let's see what we can do. Some lovely points there. Thanks ever so much uh, for, for doing that. So moving forward, these are some of the things that I'm finding now. So when I'm coaching my sales to my clients who've got sales teams or my clients who are owner business owners who are doing their own selling, these are some of the things that we're getting back, which is, is it really right to be selling in this environment? These are direct quotes from, from the feedback forms. Um, it's a bit distasteful if people are struggling to actually be selling your products and services. Um, of course, when I speak to somebody on the phone, they say, you know, they don't want to know a thing from me. The last thing I want to do is buy anything when they're, they're covering where, where it's at. And so from selling, from this point of call, things to take away, most of our problems are really in the six inches between our ears when we get down to it. If we absorb some of these messages so much, we're not actually going to be thinking of going out and talking to people who didn't know we existed and weren't aware that our products and services are available and could be useful for them. And that's the type of selling I'll be talking about today. For somebody who maybe is in a, a slightly different system, maybe just one-to-one -one, uh, um, uh, consumer van hire or something, Somebody will either want it and they'll come to you because they know where to find you and, and, and you go from there. That's not the type of selling I'm talking about today. So I'm talking about today, some of the things where we've got to build up a relationship from, from afresh uh, and working uh, with that. So the message I'd like to say now is don't, don't hold fire and wait and overanalyze and dig deep and find out the best ways. I met most of us on the call today won't be brand new to this and you've achieved greatness to, to achieve the business that you've got today. So rely on that, camp on the, on the experiences that we've got and the knowledge we've got today, but jump in with the new world and embrace the technologies as we find them. Holding fire and waiting to know the best thing all of the time puts in so much time, we get further back. And when we're further back, we've got to learn even more as things change further ahead. It's, a, it, it's not really the greatest thing. So the quote on the screen in front of you is from Napoleon Hill. Uh, his book's quite popular. It's best, tenth best-selling book in the world, or in the top ten anyway. And that's his advice: work with the tools that you have and jump in and start and start progressing from there. So as you can see, I'm probably not in my 30s. No, I may surprise some of you. I am a tad older than that. 
And one of the greatest things about being a dinosaur is that uh, those experiences I've had in the past. Um, and I've put these on the chart. Um, I, I remember in my career with the, uh, within Toshiba and I was running the corporate uh, team for Toshiba IT and the market collapsed the ERM system and I had the manufacturing sector. At that point, it was terrible. Everything collapsed. And then of course, those of you who may on the call may remember the dot-com collapse. I was uh, heading the team at IBM and uh, very much IBM at the center of dot-com. Some of my clients uh, were Deutsche Bank shifting over to uh, technology, last minute dot-com, clients like that. And the dot-com crash just basically was as impactful as the one we got today. Financial crisis, of course, is fresh in many of our memories. That's when I took over at uh, dealing as the country manager and walking into a business that was already losing multi-million pounds. And that was the situation that I walked into literally as I, uh, <laughs> I put my order down for a car and walked into a new role and then uh, the financial crisis hit. The one thing that I'll say is that with each of these examples, the work that I've put in to start the change was actually just at the point of the bottom. Where we are now with COVID is where the real work starts. Not as the market starts to increase, as it increases, we need to be at the front of the pack and ahead of our competition. It's basically, now is the hard work to take place and in selling, nothing is more important than reaching out and finding new people and prospecting. Because I don't know if many of you are any different, but I would have thought month two, the end of month two, our regular run rates, our regular clients, our regular orders are drying up thick and fast and the fresh blood we'd normally rely on hasn't been coming in. So I think the message from here is every, every recession has a recovery on the back of that. It is coming and we need to be into the recovery mode. Now is the time for us to be selling more than any other time because actually if we wait a bit longer and we're not in this prospecting mode, thinking ahead and moving forward, that market will be leaving us behind and we risk failing in the, in the recovery or certainly slipping our position maybe with our competitors, depending on your, your world. Top tip, um, in order to do this, stop reading the news straight away because we've just got a lot of board journalists around repeating the same thing and none of it is terribly helpful when we're looking at the future and the re recovery in mind. And this is something that is very, very important. I won't spend too long on it today, unfortunately, just simply because of time. But for us to be able to talk to our clients clearly and be able to have a bit of, bit of Teflon around us for clients who are gonna say, as you saw on the screen at the beginning, I'm not looking at buying anything now, I'm just trying to survive. Look, I'm more worried about my people at the moment, uh, call me back. I'll call you when I'm ready to talk about. All of these sort of things are not helpful when we're trying to sell something, but I'm sure most of us on this call have had that type of reaction or pushback that may relegate our prospecting to the back shelf because we think it won't work at the moment. What's actually not working is what we're saying isn't working at the moment. So that's the thing that needs to change. So this is a great, great slide in terms of managing or the, the, the zones coming out of a crisis. And although we've got COVID on the title, I've recognized this in each one of the examples I gave on the chart earlier on. And what we need to do mentally in our mindset as sales professionals, and I class that if it's your own business and you're doing the main selling, I'm treating everybody as a sales professional here. We need to have a mindset of the growth zone now, the pale blue or outer. And imagine that if we actually have the mindset where we're living in the present and focusing on the future, when people give us some of the objections that we hear, which are valid, very, very correct, absolutely accurate, instead of us sinking into empathy, we may, oh, empathy is one of the worst things we can have when we're prospecting, by the way, and we can test for that, and, and that's probably one of the first things to work on. Too much empathy may not be the best thing for us. We need to be a little bit resistant so that we can ask a great question as to, our prospects view of the future and where they're going to go because until we can start talking in that way and start talking making sense in the in the eyes of the prospect about what is valid and what is credible then we're really not going to be able to sell our products and services pretty much at all unless they've got a desperate need for it and our timing has been spot on 
So have a, just a quick stop now, write down any of the examples and the blue, outer blue are there. Um, I live in the present, focus on the future is one that I know people have taken uh, in my client base. Um, I am empathetic with myself and others, enables us to listen. But what we don't have to do is, is just sort of camp there and park and wait. Because as we get out of the recovery, the recovery is still moving forward and we're camped and parked there. It, it's not really going to work terribly successfully. It's quite important that if we are thinking about growth in the future, that we change our, our messaging. I, f I hope nobody from Keysafe is on the call. I hope you don't mind, but the email popped in uh, and so it was perfect timing. So this is, this is uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, half three, I think it was, it popped in, and we're still talking about um, continue to support at this testing time. Uh, all of these key sets are adapting to new ways. If we're selling now and have the right mindset, that's quite an old message. Our job really is to sell hope. If we're coming into the recovery period, we've got to be talking effectively about hope. And this will make a little bit of sense later on when we talk about some of the things that we'll be trying when trying to sell remotely. The mindset is key. Remember, most of the problems that we have start with a six inch gap between, between the ears. In my case, it's hollow, completely hollow. There's nothing there at all. But we overthink things and we rationalize things which aren't even there. We can sometimes have an argument or a conversation with somebody and they weren't even in the room. And that's the sort of stuff that we, we've got to avoid. So this is a, a description really of where traditional sales pipeline and sales funneling, hopefully on the call, even if you don't use the terminology yourselves, it, it gives an example. Our traditional way, the things we did two and a half months ago, is that we fill the top of the funnel with a lot of people who've got an interest in our products and services, and we've got a, a dialogue going. And as that dialogue gets deep, deeper, the funnel narrows, but at the end of it, we should get some orders and we should get some revenue. Times of crisis, and it's the same for all the examples I gave before. That changes shape. This isn't a traditional funnel, and we have to do things differently. So start thinking now of what we've got, and what we've got is the traditional champagne glass shape. It doesn't matter what we do, what activity we do. We've only got that very, very thin stem coming out of the back of it. So violently forcing things through, we're still going to get the same amount at the end. So that type of selling can't function successfully just at this moment in time. But what can happen is that we can fill the top of that glass, fill the top of the funnel waiting. So as we go into the recovery and that starts to open up, that very thin stem starts to get a little bit wider, you've got access to resource coming through. So with that mindset, our selling has to change. So we're moving from maybe a funnel thing where we're talking to somebody halfway through the conversation, maybe we've got two or three steps in your sales playbook, and we're in halfway through. That type of conversation isn't going to be effective. We're going to sort of be pushing, and the client's going to be pretty much saying, well, look, hold fire, we're waiting a minute, got to go to the board. This is the type of thing we're going to have. So we have to be adding a couple of steps in our selling process in that particular uh, position asking great questions from a positive mindset and our prospecting activity has to ramp up significantly because we need to fill that glass it's now wider it's a bigger receptacle we've got to reach more people but that's the type of thing that we're doing really widening our base because again it's a bit like uh, living in a in a drought the reservoir will be empty we've had two months or three months now of exhausting the ready revenue and sales closure but there's nothing new filling in the pipeline. So we have to pedal three, four, five times harder than where we were before with the magic that we can't touch anybody or meet up and have the meetings uh, in the same way. So that's another takeaway is having a look at our sales plan and our sales prospecting. Are we still prospecting in the same way, which is taking people through a process in order to take them through the funnel and get an order? If that's the case, we're going to be tripping up along the way because people aren't ready for that type of message. So is our prospecting now way back? So we've got more empathy with the client and we're having sensible conversations with the client that are reasonable and we're filling this reservoir now ready for when we can open up. So 
we've talked about some of the issues with selling and there's some great points on there. There's people in businesses who, just like myself, the rug's been pulled from underneath of them and unless anything's changed, last time I looked out the window, there was not an orderly queue for classroom training. Um, effectively, we have to reinvent ourselves quickly. Is there something that we can take here from everybody who's on the call today that are positives regarding the sales? Um, world that we're currently in anybody got anything that they've experienced that's been well actually i quite like this or this particular aspect of selling has been good you might be scraping the barrel by the looks of things new laptop joking there boy Yeah, online's definitely uh, picked up. Okay, on balance then, it's looking like there's been more difficulties than there have been opportunities coming for the group who are on the call um, today, and that's pretty typical. Um, oh, I love that one, Melissa. So taking an opportunity to rethink the model perhaps is going a little bit, well, I'm second guessing some of the points you've got there, Melissa, uh, a great thing. Looking at generating income by coming up with a gift voucher for an event that's coming up in the, for, in the future, which is actually going to hook your clients in longer term, isn't it? I like that very much. Because this is an opportunity. I know it may not say, think this way. But actually, we have to sort of suck it up a little bit. Things are not going to go back to the way they were. So recovery is not going to be, and relax. Recovery is going to be about a client base who have been harmed, who actually have possibly the wrong people on, on the seats on the bus. They, they've got people on the bus and it's all going well. But maybe the skill sets for the people on the bus, they've got changed um, uh, requirements change pressures of their business which means the conversations we're going to have with our clients in order to engage and get our products forward will have to recognize and reflect that in order for us to get traction and uh, and some opportunities starting to open up and rethinking our product set is so important now as to what we are going to move further forward so again I'm using myself as an example as an example if I'd have said this is what we're going to do, it's classroom-based training or nothing, then I can pretty much predict we'll have an element of that, of course, in the recovery. But I don't think it's going to get back to the same norm as where it was after people have experienced some of the advantages that technology has. Well, that's fantastic, Melissa. So already that's thinking ahead of the competition. You will have uh, competition there, Melissa, um, I'm sure. And so that money is now engaged uh, and client base is engaged with yourself and not elsewhere. And that example we can all take for ourselves are our competition taking advantage of situation, revisiting their product set and off, uh, an offering, and then going to market with something, something new. Okay, so, Again, one of my regulars with the, the, uh, the webinar series, looking at our selling remotely, if we just look at one particular topic, so for example, the technology, or maybe the things that we say, or maybe how we feel about things in isolation, generally, we won't have a successful result. But if we look at the situations that we have ahead of us, and think of things as a whole and think of our mindset, our activity and our skills. So in, in Sandler terms, that's uh, as you see on the slide. If we think things in equal measure about our attitude, behaviors and techniques, we will get a successful outcome. So I'll give you an example. If we go on free webinars and get free examples of how to do a great uh, opening statement on a telephone call, but we don't believe telephone calls work, 
then we'll have moderate success because I'll come over on the phone or somebody who's not really interested, even the faintest resistance, I'm going to back off straight away and say, well, I'll call you in six months time or something like that. And it'll fail because the magic ingredient in there is my mindset that I didn't truly believe and wasn't committed in order to achieve that, um, achieve that success. Equally with a prospecting call, if I've got the mindset, this is the thing for me and absolutely marvelous, and I've got the right skills, I've got down to a T what I'm going to say, but actually before I do that, I'll just do my uh, MailChimp, I'll just go and do my design of my certificates. Sorry, I messed in the new really, but that type of example. We don't actually do it, it isn't going to work. And finally, if we've got the right mindset, that you know, prospecting calls work, I'm going to get on the phone and do it, but we don't actually get our skills right and we, we do the hate crime. Um, then they won't work either. Uh, sorry, uh, hate crime is how are you today? Especially at COVID times, that's not the, the right question to ask. So we've got to look at things as a whole. So selling remotely now, uh, I'll come forward with some tips and ideas that hopefully at least one is something worthy of, of trying, but it's incorporating all, all three in one go. So before you really get anywhere, let's look at the mindset side of things, our, our attitude. And in order to be successful, selling remotely now is that we have to revisit what we've already got. And I've just listed five Ps there. How are we feeling? Uh, and, and this is going to affect our ability to perform in an effective manner about our personal presence. How are we feeling? What's, what's our gravitas is a good old fashioned word, but it works really, really well. Who buys off somebody who doesn't believe, whose self belief is very obviously uh, torpedoed? So our personal presence, what, what are we trying to uh, project? Is our projection wholly unreasonable? I mean, if we're, if we're as bouncy as Tigger from Winnie the Pooh and talking about our un unbelievable success, like left, right and center, Actually, our credibility isn't going to go terribly well. And equally, it doesn't show much empathy for somebody who might be struggling. So again, personal presence needs to be revisited when selling remotely. Very, very important. We've got to be prospecting 70% of our day, I would have thought. If we're not engaging with people we haven't spoken to, to before, that's the type of prospecting ratio I put in myself personally and with my teams, both here in the UK and my teams internationally is you have to have a step up with our prospecting. So we need to have some form of cookbook and KPI measurement about how much time we are spending prospecting. Because it would be lovely to think that everybody we spoke to will probably say yes or no about buying. But it's more likely one in 10 at the best in times. And it's not the best of times. So maybe it's going to be one in 50, one in 100, depending on your product and service, of course. So we've got to be prospecting at the right, at the right quantity, the right levels. And we have to be measuring our success and having a playbook in place that actually qualifies where people are in our playbook and our selling playbook. And our selling playbook will be something like maybe four or five touch points before somebody orders. So how are we taking people along that and that path? The chances are you won't get past much further than one or two at this particular time. But when the recovery happens, which will happen, the more of these ones and twos that we're engaging with successfully, professionally, and effectively will open up to come threes and fours and fives as their world becomes a little bit better. So our own performance and profit potential needs to be measured and um, uh, harnessed um, to make sure that we're, we're effective. So we have to revise our selling behaviors. In the top right, we've got a, a, a snippet there from Twitter. It's old news now, it's about a week or so ago. And Twitter are basically saying, look, people don't have to come back to the office if they don't want to. Um, a CEO, uh, a client of mine, we were talking about their lease is coming up for renewal. And frankly, he's not entirely sure he's gonna renew the lease because his extended team is in a business of about 28 people. His extended team now are working very, very effectively, and there are enormous benefits about working remotely that weren't there before. There are drawbacks I appreciate, but looking at the cost of sale when the market's not going to be there and when our forecasts drop, possibly that's something that's going to force continuation, and that's the same right way across the board. So our selling behaviors 
even out of recovery and as you'll see the stock exchange going up you'll see other things improving maybe there's going to be a further dip before that happens but it will happen we may not have the people returning into the place of work that they were there before let's be mindful as a buyer um, I'm not sure if people on the call have been a buyer or are currently a buyer as well as part of their role but I've been a buyer as well and supplier engagement is something that eats into your time quite a lot so if I have a supplier vendor come to me I might reserve a couple of hours and then I've got probably a bunch of tasks to do after it well I'm not going to go back now after this world where I can talk to a supplier for 20 25 minutes very effectively and maybe I can fit three or four or five in a in a morning as opposed to just the one previously I'm going to keep it as it is so our new behavior has to reflect and we have to get good at it of this new world so we would have done before and as people are surprised getting into the selling world there isn't a huge list of things that you can try in order to have new conversations with clients so I have to press pause on some of this some of it may come back but the networking events where we had before it's not really the same there's some stuff online and it's proved to be effective but I've sat on some of those and they're quite chatty and it's a nice community thing but I'm not sure the, the selling uh, thing is going to get quite back into play event marketing and I know we've got people on events and the calls as well we'll have to revisit that and whilst whilst we're looking at hosting a traditional event in the same old vein for the people who've got that as their business on the call today we'll have to change the type of events give me a call Amy afterwards and you know I'm an events man I don't know if there's something you can help me with I'm not sure lunch meetings social meetings meeting up for a coffee that that has to change so the new behavior has to of course master the dark arts of some video conferencing and looking at the social selling the cold calling that we had before and each one of these has to change the way we speak the sentences we use the openings we use and how we manage the call because they're quite radically quite radically different it's not going to go where it was before and as salespeople, we probably have to look at our own PR and our own publicity because we have to speak to people and they have to be aware that we're open for business because again I I'm not sure your experiences but I I am being um, peppered with people just out of the blue getting a hold of me on LinkedIn and then selling me a mortgage uh, I don't want a mortgage don't need a mortgage I couldn't get a mortgage if I wanted to anyway um, and yet that's just come and gone it's not a technique that's going to work but quite possibly I could have been a referral agent I could have been somebody who could actually point out people who would be useful and actually I could be in the market if somebody explored some of the things that I was doing in my life but the approach and the sales approach was the product wrong no was the service wrong no but was the approach and the skills that used to work appropriate now no they, they were wholly wrong and that's a great example of if we're trying to shoehorn what we've known before and what we've had in our experience before and I'm talking about eight ten weeks ago we have to revisit the sentence the grammar the, the, the words we use all has to be very very different now and on our leadership uh, webinars one of the big uh, critical success factors about re leading teams remotely has been how we connect with people and what's shining through is we have to be more in connection with our people than we were before and that's in this new digital world so we have to revise the selling behaviors that we have in our are you missing on selling behaviors in the premier we have to revise our selling behaviors because what was happening eight ten weeks ago cannot be effective today and therefore our recovery will be hampered and our products and services can have a, a, a role to play so here's an example of uh, it happens to be a client of uh, some of the things that they're doing just to attract detection um, there's new technology uh, now that will just do little mini videos on the basis of a gif so this is a prospecting tool and by the way I'm not advocating any of the things you'll see I'm just showing examples whereby 
instead of just peppering the world like the key safe message we had before, which was in this troubled time and everything else like that, we, we're bombed out with that sort of stuff. But we have to get engagement to strike a conversation with people. And this is uh, an eye catchy way of saying, this is what we want to get a hold of you about. And if I wanted to, I could just play the video and there's a message there. And the message is on the lines of, look, I'll be giving you a call. Hope you'll take my call and some further information on that. So, oh, by the way, if anybody's interested in that, it's a product called Bomb Bomb. Have a little look at it. There are thousands of things out there. But the chap that you see in front of you on this particular video has been selling IT solutions for a number of years. And uh, his role has been dealing with or moving into the corporate sector. And he's pretty much abandoned a lot of the typical behaviors that we listed before. And he's now trying the new world, but still keeping the sales integrity and sales methodology and training in place, which is having great bonding rapport, knowing great questioning techniques, going through pain, checking and qualifying the client for budget and decision making and so on. So the, the behaviors are changing, but his mindset is really, really fresh and he's just retooled and reskilled and coming further forward. So another technique that we can try is looking at some of the profiling that we have with our clients. And I think this came out in the prospecting box. Yes, it did. Fandy Digital Prospecting. Uh, Emmanuel, you popped in there with right customer segmentation and so on and so forth. I'd like to suggest that at this particular moment and in terms of recession and looking forward to recovery, maybe now's the time to get back in touch with all of the people we've amassed along the journey over the last couple of years or so. And I'm as true as anybody. I've had clients several years, eighth year now for me with uh, Sandler. And there are people I haven't spoken to in four or five years because we had a, a, a relationship a while ago, short-lived. But now's the time to pick up and to say, well, how are you doing? How's it going? Because we can bridge that gap with a, with a decent conversation to be had after that. So the tool I'm sharing with you in front of you, it's um, Sandler uh, Intellectual Property, but I'm sure everybody can draw squares on a piece of paper like the rest of us. And I'd like to invite you to read maybe ex-clients, uh, relationships you haven't had for a while, current clients, and I'd like you to do something different with them. So we've all understood about dicing and slicing our client base. I don't know, typically, you know, in the past, I may have sort of uh, selected prospective clients from mind about the size of turnover the amount of employees, whether they're international, not international, part of a group or whatever, each one of us on the call will have our way of dicing and slicing our employees. But that has a, a problem at times of recession, which we're damn well in, and it'll get worse probably before the recovery, in that if we did the same thing with animals, for an example, or insects, if we had a category of spiders, what would be useful in that category is not lumping all spiders into the one pool and we say, well, that's the spider pool. I'll now do my whatever work with spiders I need to do. What would be a little bit more interesting is which ones are poisonous. And I'm more interested actually in the poisonous spiders than I am the fact that they're a spider. That's the bit that's interesting. And I will handle it in a different way. And this is what the uh, care tool is about. If, we, if you go back to the base now and segment all the relationships you have into categories of keep accounts. So this is your run rate account. People who are with you in the halfway through a long-term relationship or people who steadily, they're not massive, they're not great, they don't sort of like pull, pull out trees, but they, they do regularly uh, be with your client. You don't have to do anything much with them. Maybe they're your keep and you have a criteria and a, a type of conversation you have with people who are regular keep accounts. Recapture are people who used to be with you or tried you for a little while and then went to a competitor or stopped buying off you for, for one reason or another. 
And analysis shows that 91.5% of buyers who turn down suppliers, maybe they go for three quotes, they choose supplier A and they drop B and C. That's the ratio of buyers who have no idea why B and C never get in touch again. And it's true, isn't it? If we lose a deal, lose a project, it's human nature just to sort of put to one side, oh no, they bought Jim Smith's products. But the buyer has no idea why you don't keep the relationship going. So recapture could be another bucket of people you, who didn't buy off you in the past. And we'll put those into a category. So there could be clients that just didn't choose to. Attain, the ones you've always had your eye on. These are the people who are, if only, I was about to say, um, uh, Rolls-Royce bought off me, because that's a bad example, isn't it? Um, but it only... Um, international rescue bought off me that's the type of clients i really want so attain are, are the people that you've always had your eye on and then expand are pretty much as as you would expect so there are people who come to me for i don't know hiring salespeople. so i'm one of the top five percent in the uk in terms of that type of uh, area so I'll help and coach and train and transfer the skills in order to, to do that and go away. But then they could, horror stories, and it has happened, they've done their sales training with somebody else or, you know, they've, be, they've gone to leadership training somewhere else or whatever. And I'm sort of sat there thinking, well, hang on a minute, uh, I do those. But they came to me for one particular aspect of my world. So expand or somebody the accounts where you think, well, that department doesn't buy that region doesn't buy, or maybe you were selling into the government sector and you sell to Bedfordshire now, but you don't sell to the local councils perhaps, or maybe the authorities on the doorstep. So expand is that um, uh, example. And uh, attain, attain is somebody who, thanks for that uh, on the chat box, attain is somebody you've no trading relationship with at all, and you are genuinely going out to prospect anew and bring them on board into the account, either start a long process or depending on your product service, it's a short process or whatever. So keep is run rate, you know, house accounts, uh, recapture of people you've flirted with in the past, they've gone away and you want to get them back, to get a new message. Um, expand is people you're in, you're in bed with now, but there's lots of potential who aren't buying your products and services. Attain are the people who are absolutely fresh brand new, picking a fresh flower. The reason why this is important, and, I, and maybe some of you got it now, but for, for, for those who aren't that clear, doesn't our messaging change in each of those categories? So somebody who is in the recapture cap category, because I'm sure we can all picture somebody who went elsewhere, maybe two or three years ago, I'd be talking something like, this, look, I'm... I, how are things going, of course, and you listen to see where it's going to be. I appreciate that we we spoke two or three years ago, but it's pretty pretty likely that things have changed with yourself quite, a, you know, just as much as they've radically changed with me since we last spoke. I know three years ago I wasn't the right fit, and perhaps I'm still not the right fit now, and I might not be a right fit tomorrow. Do you think it makes sense to spend 20 minutes in a conversation together to see if there's a match between your goals and ambition and the products and services that are supply? What do you think? That structure of a sales approach is going to be different than you'd have with maybe a house account, a keep account, where you've just basically on the lines of, look, um, uh, Jim, look, I'm reaching out. We've known each other for a couple of years now. How's it going for you? And that type of conversation is going to be open. It's going to be frank. It's going to be honest. It's not going to change your world. But what it can do, if you've got the goal, is maybe reach out and offer referrals testimonials, joint ventures, um, working with association, collaboration. Those are the five things that you can have with your keeper accounts. The messaging changes with attain and the messaging changes with expand. It's the messaging. It's what we say is the be all and end all with this. It's our ability. It's the stuff between our ears. If we say that won't work, that's not my style, I don't sound authentic, this is stuff that we do to stand on our own foot to prevent us going further forward. Um, I've just completed uh, with my first set of podcasting. I quite enjoyed it, actually. But 
I haven't done podcasting before, but if I'd have thought, well, I won't be good at that. I don't like the sound of my own voice. Um, nobody's interested in what I've got to say. I'd never have done it. And it's this mindset stuff that could get in the way. So love you to take the key, pertain, recapture, expand the, um, the, the words out of your mind there is care. Uh, and then pop in accounts over your base because all we've got to do now is prospecting. Don't think many of us are on the call overburdened with the queue outside the door demanding to force money into our account. So what else are we going to do? Well, this is where we can start. And Emmanuel's question was a great one on the, the opposition on the chat box was perfect. We can profile and then get right exactly how we feel about these prospects and get our skills up in terms of the way that we have the conversations with these people. So for the chat box, jump in. The last few slides have been quite busy, but is there any mindset or a behavior that you can self that you can take back into your world now? Just a couple of minutes. Any, any takeaways from what we've just done on the last half dozen slides? It's also a chance for me to have a slurp of my tea. Okay, thank you. So coming up with some new stuff. And just to recap on that one, whatever we did before, it has to change. The market has to change or whatever. So a complete revamp, rethink, and let's not be scared. And for people who, who um, nobody be as old as me on the call, uh, unless you're in a care home or whatever. Um, but honestly, if, if people like I can do this, then we should be going ahead. And in truth, um, Gartner, uh, colleagues of mine in Gartner and other such places talk about, we should really be looking at our sales messaging about every 18 months to two years, because that's the speed of change with our buyer. You may have heard about the term, the educated buyer. Well, that's forcing a revisit of what, what role we perform in sales. A lot of people confuse it with marketing now, which uh, there is a clear distinction between the two. Selling is really, really important, but it has to change in the messaging that we do. Yeah, reconnecting. Honestly, we're nice people, and all of us on the call would be really honest, and we really do genuinely want to do our best for our people. So here's a great time to just reach out and say, how's it going, how do you feel? And the great thing about now with this technology, everybody's in. So first of all, you're gonna get hold of people that maybe you couldn't have got hold of before, and secondly, wow, we're all in the same boat. So the honesty and the heartfelt conversations that you can have just from that position are fantastic. It makes account management really worthwhile. We, you know, it's quite touching at times. Melissa, like that, especially in your world, um, Okay, so uh, Melissa makes a point about the type of messaging uh, because people are under pressure. And here's an algorithm to keep in mind. At times of crisis, which was the recession, the dot com and everything else, when we're going out with our selling message, our rule book changes. So when the economy is like this and people are beating a path to our, do path to our door and we're, we're really just sending out quotes and hoping to be competitive, we don't have to be that giving in what we do because the pipeline is different. That funnel is really wide and there's a potential of a lot to come out of the bottom. But when it's shaped like this champagne flute and it's a very thin uh, stream that can ever come from it, our role has to change and we have to give. So if we're selling now, start to think about a three to one or a four to one ratio between absolute no obligation giving messages so three or four in my world that'd be white papers webinars uh, uh, some form of coaching or whatever three or four of those before we then start to say something that's more self-interest which is while I've got you I wonder if you could possibly help me and we talk about something in our own world and Melissa you're in an ideal opportunity that to revisit and the feedback from clients hopefully might like the blue touch paper for maybe a couple of other ideas like we've had before about the voucher system that may help and you can take back into, into your business. 
but it's the conversations that's the key. If we don't have the conversations, that can't happen. So selling now, again, this is this is what I, what I'm doing with sales teams. The mindset for our salespeople is to join the marketing and the sales and selling effort in order to get great conversations taking place. That's the key. Because if we're looking at moving prospects through a pipeline, that's like a champagne stem now. That's going to be tricky. So conversations are key. And people love talking about themselves. So never has there been a better time to let people talk about their own situations. More engagement. Yeah, Fandy, thank you. We've got to up our game. So 70% of our time should be thinking about people, talk to people we haven't spoken to before. It's huge, huge. I, please, I don't underestimate it. It's not a glib fact from a textbook. This is me doing it myself uh, and being successful, thankfully, uh, and managing teams. The ratio is huge because what comes out of the sausage machine is so thin we have to just put more in and that means us working and peddling so if we're doing something that's useful scrap that bit it ask yourself the question is this really selling and if it's not park it to eight at light night and uh, I mean believe me there's the television is so appalling and anything that was good we've seen it so while there's something on like the darts final 1986 it's an ideal opportunity to get the piece of paper out do care you don't have to pay anybody for it. I was giving away for nothing. And just do care and then start writing names. And then in the morning, you've got a plan about who you're going to get in touch with. Prospects, prospects, prospects. Oh, gee. Really? You didn't write to me. Love tea. Love tea. Okay. So to keep on time, I'm just going to go through developing your techniques. On the left, uh, uh, as you look at the screen, on the left, you'll see the perfect world about how the bro should say what's going on. On the right is actually what our clients tend to see, appalling haircuts, and that's the view of people if we don't set up our, our world correctly. So developing the technique, let's make sure that in our heads that we haven't gone a bit soft in our eight weeks of isolation, we wouldn't turn up in the old world in, I don't know, in a suit with a hole in the front and stains, you know, and this sort of stuff, um, or, or, or we arrive and we've got one black shoe, one blue shoe on. You know, we just don't do that. Let's not forget that in this world, it is a lot more informal, which I love, by the way. I'm talking to prospects now and, and clients now who have the same difficulties with Amazon ringing at the door at the wrong time, cat walking across the keyboard. It's a lot more informal. It's, it's quite human. It's nice. But let's not go too far with it. I see the most extraordinary things on this. I've been doing them so frequently. And I'm just saying... Double check, we're, we're not one of them. That was my haircut a few weeks ago, by the way. Now I just don't have hair, so it's even easier. Uh, look, here's another one now. I don't expect you to read it. This is a message I got. I've blanked the name because it's real on LinkedIn. And I bet you, you get the same yourselves. It's just somebody reached out to connect on LinkedIn. So I said, yeah, that's great because they're in my catchment. I looked at the profile, they're in my catchment area. So yeah, glad to connect. And then I get, Thanks for connecting me a little bit more background information for you on what we do. Well, I didn't ask, and I didn't care. Uh, typically, business owners approach me. Well, I'm delighted that he's got people beaten down at a path to his door because he won't need me. Uh, often, they're unhappy about paying. Well, bless them, but I don't care. I don't know them. Uh, does this sound familiar? Well, it would if I was interested. It would be a choice to work, go back to work. our comprehensive whole of the market fact find. Wow. you know. It didn't fill my heart with glee. So LinkedIn is probably the best for the, a lot of you on this call will be B to B. And if you are B to consumer, then by the sounds of what's coming through in the chat box, your consumers are professionals, perhaps it would be a great catchment market. So it's not always people who are uh, uh, live at home or people who are retired, you are dealing with professionals need catching up and so on and so forth. So LinkedIn is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Instagram is really coming alive for those who haven't been there before, and Facebook is too. Maybe not as a vehicle for providing leads, but in the great branding scheme of things and letting people know you're there and alive, they're very, very important. So I changed my messaging now. And so, listen, when somebody gets hold of me now, they'll get a message from me saying, look, no need to reply to me, no obligation at all. I'm just gonna tell you now, I'm not gonna jump on your back and try and flog you something. 
but here's my little virtual handshake and um, thanks for appreciate you getting in touch thanks ever so much and you know and here's this thing uh, this is yesterday's so kevin at the bottom there chris thanks for your email of course i've pressed the wrong button thanks for your email it's a relief not to... our conversation's broken out because i didn't sell anything but i am selling please know that my route to market is by having an intelligent conversation with people so they can make the right choices for something that makes sense in their world. And if it suits me, great. If it doesn't suit me, that's great too. But you might have to keep in touch because it might do as times change in a few months' time. Or perhaps maybe they know somebody who would be more suitable for this type of product and service. So we've got to do our own work so that we write, say the right things, we ask the right questions, and we phrase them in such a way that the conversation breaks out. And that's what we must do now remotely more than ever. So a conversation needs to break out on the phone. It's a really powerful thing, the phone, by the way. You can speak to, well, generally I could do about, in, in two 45-minute sessions, I'll get to dial about 37 to 40 phone numbers on average. I'll speak to about 10, 12 people. Of the 10, 12 people, two, three, or four, will actually have some interest in what it is that I do, and it's relevant. Where it goes from there is another thing. Could be referrals, could be news to come, and so on and so forth. What ratio could you get with any other tool that we've, we've got? It's difficult, isn't it? So I know it's difficult getting people's phone numbers now and so on. That's for another day. But we've got to master our questioning skills and reversing. Reversing is where if somebody asks us a question, we don't answer it. We offer something in return where they expand more. Chris, how much is a, a seat on one of your training courses? And I'll say, well, that's, that's a great question, but I'm not sure training source courses are right for you at the moment. Can you tell me why you asked me that? And then they'll tell me more. And then I learn so much more. If I then said a seat of my training course is one pound, I risk them saying, the other guys are doing it 50p, or thanks ever so much, and then they're straight on the email, and they tout that around to absolutely everybody. And they might go on a training course for somebody else, 50p, uh, which won't work, and they've made a terrible decision. So if I answer the question directly, I'm actually not doing a great service for my clients. So we've got to have these questioning skills sorted out. And then the thing that happens in everybody's mind is, well, that doesn't sound right. I don't like it. It's pushy. Don't like to do that. Because that's what we were told when we were growing up, weren't we? So for those of you who are in the same era as me, speak when you're spoken to. Stop asking questions. Don't be nosy. All of this stuff, really helpful for my future sales career. Don't talk about money. It's rude. So we have to fight these demons as well. So. We've got to get tooled up and uh, skilled up. So on the call today, uh, Sandra have got an app for their phone. I'm winding up now. Get in touch with me. It's free at the moment. They are going to charge at some point, um, but we can get that free. Uh, talk to Sam, Emmanuel on the chat box or whatever. We can get you the details for that. And that's me. I'm not sure I've got time for any questions, but I'll throw it open. Sam, Emmanuel, if you want to take the call back, um, and I'll see if I can help with any questions. Thank you, Chris, for sharing those um, new selling techniques with us. I think we've um, run uh, to 12 o'clock, but if anybody's got uh, any further questions, you know, please uh, put them in the chat uh, straight away, if you may. If not, uh, thank you very much for your time today. I hope it was of value. We really uh, value uh, your feedback. So please, please, please um, send us um, your feedback via a survey uh, that you will receive uh, in a follow-up email with the presentation and recording of the webinar. We've got uh, some further webinar coming up, which you saw at the beginning of the program. So. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you for all attending, and uh, we hope to see you soon on our SEMLEP webinar. Oh, it's a 